Hope you're well. Uh, I am here in my rehearsal room where I rehearse with my band. Uh, we're a tribute band and we play in Switzerland. And I've been asked recently about my sound, how I get my sound live on stage. Um, and so I thought it would, I figured it would be a good idea to make a little video um, where I explain to you everything. So how I get my sound, uh, you know, the type of video that's ends in down and start, starts with a word, a word that ends in ig, ig, <clears throat> down. I shall not say the word because as you all know, <laughs> it's, yeah, John knows, he knows what I mean. So let's, let's get to it. For the purpose of this demo, the sound will be coming out of those, these Q, QSC powered speakers, which we use uh, to rehearse with our band, there are two of them. And also there are some subwoofers which do help with the bass, even though I have a low cut in my signal chain to remove some of the bass, because it's not my place to be. We have a bass player for that. So, let's start where we all start, shall we? This is my guitar. This is a red, well, a purple special, made by Ben Belbon of Belbon Guitars in the UK, in Leicestershire, more precisely. And uh, this was made and given to me uh, last October, so October 2023. Um, and it's slightly different in terms of construction to the original. The main differences are um, the fact that uh, the top is different. So this is flamed maple. And of course the, co the color is different, as you <laughs> probably noticed. It's a nice shade of purple. Um, otherwise, so it has a black binding, which is again slightly different from the original, which is white. And uh, what else it was it different? The me oh, of course, the big di so Yonderbus pickups in terms of electronics. Um, and you probably noticed, and it was the star of the show <laughs> during the last meetup in England. It has glitters under the fretboard, so let's try and get a good shot of them, but you can probably see. So it works really well under white stage lights, so I set the, li the lights to be a mix of purple and white here. And you can see it looks pretty good, and it's, <laughs> according to Ben, it was one of the hardest things he's ever, <laughs> he's ever made, he's not doing it again. So it's probably the only red special in existence which has this, um, those glitters. And so I love this guitar very much. You can see the back. So the back is made of sepeli. I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but it's a, it's a, a different strain of mahogany. As you can see the grain. So it's natural. So it's not. I don't. Ben will tell me if I'm wrong, but it, I don't think it's stained. So it's natural. The neck is mahogany as well and it's natural as well. Oops. Locking tuners on the back. You can see it's serial number 003. So it's it's a guitar which I just love. It's unique. There's not two guitars like that in the world and I just knew Ben would be the right person to make it. Now to the electronics department. So it's this is my strap. I'm not sure of the name of the brand of the strap, but it's one of the self-locking ones. And it's quite useful on stage when you need to change guitars, for instance, if you break a string. So the signal f goes from the guitar directly to this little box, which is a Yonderbusk strap treble booster. I think it's based on the B. B149 tr um, transistor, but I'm not sure, or capacitor, sorry. 
So it's it's very light, really compact, and I really love the fact that it's got an on-off switch in the middle. You can see it shining here. So I can just slip my finger in there and turn it off when I, whenever I'm not playing. Saves on the battery life, and I don't have to plug and unplug the jack every time. Then it goes into a wireless system, which is the Boss WL60T. Uh, I'm not using it today. Um, because the receiver and the pedal, the, the rest of the pedal board is in storage somewhere <laughs> in this room, and I don't want to go find it. So I'll be, as you can see, I'm plugged um, from the treble booster through a jack cable to the to the helix. So let's go. M while we're talking about the helix, here it is. So this is what gets me my sound mostly. So for those who know the helix. Uh, they probably know that you can. You have, there's two modes basically available. Two modes available. There's well, three modes. The preset mode, which I don't use. Snapshot mode, which basically are presets inside of presets, and stomp mode, which I rarely use now. Basically, stomp mode is like a normal pedal board where you switch your effects individually on and off. And snapshot mode, where I, I'm usually at, basically it's it's like you make you make little presets inside of your preset. So the first of those snapshots, the small presets which I use, I just call it normal. So it's just the amp, some chorus, and that's it. Some reverb, which is which is a room reverb. That's it. So let's hear how that how that sounds like. Next I have a snapshot called These Days, which as the name suggests uh, is the delays from the second part of the solo of These Are The Days Of Our Lives, which is two repeats. So I'll show you, basically turns this delay on and I'll try and navigate through it to show you the settings. Yeah, there we go. So it's two repeats uh, on the left and on the right. And I think it's 480 milliseconds and 960 milliseconds. Let's hear how it sounds like. So the next snapshot in line is called Princes and refers to Princes of the Universe. We play a bit of that song uh, during our medley with the band. Uh, and so this is just for the harmonies at the beginning of the song. Um, and so it turns on these two harmonizers there, which feed the same harmony line. Uh, so the, the harmony line itself is three semitones up. So I'm playing a note, and the harmony is three semitones higher than that. I'll show you how it sounds like. <laughs> the next snapshot in line is called Solo, and this is just a volume boost of I think three decibels and a slight delay which is turned on and it's just to sound a bit better during the solos whenever I play a solo. I know Brian doesn't do it himself but he probably has people at the desk turning him up whenever he's playing a solo and of course you can always, always hear some delays. So that's my way of doing it. I just turn that on 
and I'm just slightly louder and I have a little delay going on. Next is the phaser. Um, this is my <laughs> approximation of a Fox phaser. So if I turn him up, turn it off, uh, on, sorry, I'll show you. So I use a script nut phase, which we all know, I think, the equivalent in the real pedal world. Um, so it's just to give me an approximation of the Fox phaser, and I, I use it only during Keep Yourself Alive. <laughs> Next is the Keep Yourself Alive solo snapshot. Uh, so it, this this is a delay. It turns on a delay of. Let me see. Yeah. Um, so 900 milliseconds on the left and 1800 milliseconds on the right. So it's just slightly louder than Brighton Rock, and this delay also has a little modulation. So it says chorus, but it's more like a phaser going on. So it's extra phasing and and delays. So as a, as a way to replicate the live solo of Keep Yourself Alive. Sounds like this. <laughs> Next in line is a snapshot called Magic, which I use to uh, replicate the short, well, the long delays um, in the bridge just before the solo in a kind of magic. So, this flame that burns inside of me. There's some little chords, clean chords going on, at, le at least in the live versions. And Brian uses a delay, two delays for that song. So, I'll show you what it does. It turns on this delay here, which is set to a tap tempo, this one, not uh, set milliseconds. So I can use this thing, which is called a tap tempo, and it sets the tempo of the song. So for a kind of magic, it would be something like that. And now the delays are linked to it and will play in time. And lastly, this is called Brighton, and I think we all know what this does. I'll, sh I'll still show you because some people don't know, but let me just navigate through there. Okay, so this turns on a delay, which has two repeats, one on the left going 80, 1800, no, sorry, 800, mi no, yes, 800 milliseconds on the left, and 1600 milliseconds on the right. No feedback and I think the mix is just slightly less than 50%, so I can still hear myself playing whenever I move on the stage, which is important for me. I'll show you how that sounds like shortly. <laughs>
Another thing which I use is the Wawa, so in this case I use the Helix Expression pedal which you need to press really hard. Ah, there we go, it's activated. And you can see it turns on the wah, which is right at the center of the screen here. And I'm not sure which model of wah I use, let me see. Yeah, it's it's called the Fassel wah, and I'm not sure why it's called Fassel, but it's the best sounding one for the Brian May sound, which I found in the Helix. So let's see how that sounds like. <coughs> Let's talk connections. So I come out of the Helix through the XLR out, which go directly to the mixer, and are panned left and right in stereo. Um, that's what the audience hears, and the rest of the band hears. Um, I also go out of the quarter inch out, uh, only the left, and this goes to a Headrush FRFR speaker which is the 8 inch version and I just use that for the guitar so it's just a way to hear myself better and also it helps with the feedback so I can push push it very high and if I angle it in, in, the, in the proper way I'm not disturbing the rest of my bands and I can still get some nice feedback which I'll show you later So that's it really, that's what I use and um, thank you very much for watching this video. Um, I hope this helps you know, people who are hesitant to buy the Helix, thinking will it do a nice Brian May sound and I know it's an investment but when you compare to other um, multi-effects out there like the Quad Cortex or the Headrush Prime, which I'm sure also do a fine job, the Helix is it's a bit more affordable really. You can even buy the LT version, which is, I think, £500 less pricey, pretty much. And it does just the same sounds. It's the same sounds, it's, it's just the construction is a little less solid, you might say. It's not heavy-duty metal like the Helix is, but it's still very good and it will get you in the ballpark if, if you give it enough you know, practice and, and you take time in making the presets. So thank you very much for watching. See you later.